JG's Fight Talk, sponsored by Riches Boxing and Limitless Creations. And with me now, the man of the moment, Marcus Morrison. How you doing, Marcus? I'm good, mate. I'm well. Are you? Yeah, good. really well, thanks. It's been a bit of a day, but we got there. We got there. We're there now. Exactly. <laughs> How's things, anyway? How's things going? Uh, Training-wise, training's going brilliant. Uh, I feel in the best possible place it could be, and... You know, I've got not much to focus on now apart from, you know, getting ready for this fight and being ready come May 1st. Yeah, big card as well. Uh, Parker Chisora, uh, Taylor Jonas. You know, there's, there's some big names on there already and you're you're in the mix. That's How do you feel being on a card like that as well? Yeah, it's, you know, not only obviously am I in a, in a massive fight, but a um, stable mate, uh, Tasha Jonas, obviously fighting Katie Taylor. And obviously, top by the bill, um, and Parker and White, which you know, after the if the first fight's in it to go by, it's uh, it's going to be a belter. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's going to be um, it's going to be one of those nights in it where there's going to be fireworks in every fight. I think just looking down the list, you know, I think you've got um, Bivol and uh, Bivol as well. You know, he's, uh, as well, so. he's, he's fighting Richards. So, yeah, you know, obviously, Bivol's a, a great talent and it'd be nice to uh, see that up close. Yeah, no, definitely, mate. So, let's let's focus on you for a second. That's what we're here for. Um, you know, where did where did it all start for you, Marcus? Boxing, when did, when did it come into your life? Boxing, uh, it was actually my seventh birthday. On my seventh birthday, I, I was taken um, for the first time to my local boxing gym, just, you know, Two, three hundred yards uh, from my front door, and you know I've boxed ever since. Twenty, what, twenty-one years later, we're here, and obviously turned pro two thousand fourteen. So boxing's all I've ever known. Yeah, yeah. So you're sort of 20, 26 fights in now, twenty-three wins. How many? How many knockouts? About sixteen. Uh, if I'm honest, you probably know more than me. I'm not too sure. <laughs> I think yeah, it's, a, it's around that. It's around that. I thought you'd be checking out your box rec, mate. I thought you'd be checking it out. No, do you, know what? you often, I think a lot of boxers, they often lose count how many fights have even had. You know, if you, obviously before all this, this uh, camp started, if you would have asked me, I, I, you know, I could have had a good guess, but I probably wouldn't have known how many fights they even had. Yeah. I think, I think with, the, with the sort of fighters process, they just sort of roll into their next one, don't they? They think, well, right, exactly. what's next? You know, you've got the, the WBC International as well. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, I picked that up uh, for the second time uh, over in Rome uh, against Blandamora. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, you know, you know, once you had so many fights, you all just, each camp just seems to, you know, <laughs> roll into one and before you know it, you, 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 you've lost count. Is, is your title, so we'll fast forward to 1st of May, is your title on the line for that fight as well? No, it's a non-title fight, 10 round non-title fight. Okay. So what, I suppose it's it's all about just picking up, moving up the rankings, apart from beating up Chris Eubank Jr., which is obviously on your mind. It's about picking yeah. up the rankings and moving up from there. Of course, for me, this you know, this level of fight, I don't need a I don't need a title on the line for this level of fight. This um I go and go and win this fight and this, you know, automatically, you know, skip a few belts, it throws me right up there in in the in the world mix, yeah, yeah. Because you you look at, um, you know, you look at Eubank's style. It's quite an interesting. You know, he seems to very much focus himself on his speed, doesn't he, and his power. You know, you always see him on on the you know doing the old quick speed hands. He's always showing that off, and you know, is it, where do you sort of? I know you won't give too much away because obviously you don't want it, but. Where do you sort of see a weakness in his kind of game plan? Um, listen, you back to a, a, a very, very good fighter. Um, you know, for me, he's, he's, he's world level. Um, 
But the there is obviously weakness in his games. He's got two defeats on his record against, in my eyes, very good boxers. Um, when I say boxers, it's I mean the, boxers, isn't it? it's the, uh, boxers, the style, what stylistic wise, yeah. you know, Eubank, you know, loves to loves to fight, and if if um, if you stand and fight with Eubank, he, you know, he's more than happy to to return the fight. Um, obviously, he's come stuck twice now again, like I said, against good boxers. So I think to beat a fighter like Eubank, you've got to be able to box very well, uh, but be able to fight when you have to. Yeah, yeah. Because I think if we go back, it was the World Boxing Super Series, wasn't it, that he fought in, and it was against Groves, wasn't it? Was his... Groves, yeah. And um, Groves never really wanted to go in the fight did he? he he kept him at you know kept him at distance box really probably the best boxing performance Groves had put up to that point um and that seemed to you know be the be well beat Eubank really quite easily didn't it you know he couldn't get in could he because he can yeah, exactly. yeah. so. you know it was it was probably a given before the fight that Groves would you know with, with his long arms try and keep the, the fight at distance and outboxing, you know, he's got a great pedigree and um, great amateur background. So I think, you know, obviously going into that fight, that was a massive advantage of uh, of Groves going in there, keeping it long and, you know, not getting too involved in what, what you might wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. So, as, well, like, as you were saying, it's a case of you've got to just see how he approaches the fight as to how your game plan, you know, I'm sure you've got several game plans with Joe already set up. I know, I know, Joe's brilliant sort of tactician with how to work fights. He's done it a long time, hasn't he? So um, it'd be you know it'd be interesting to see how he approaches as to what game plan you go with. Exactly, I think um, the ball's in Eubank's court when it comes to you know this fight. I'm well aware that at some point in the fight, it, it might be a few rounds a boxing match, which you know I'm, I feel comfortable with, uh, and it's sort of up to him. Because um, at some stage he's going to revert, you know. I think he's, he's been working on his, his boxing, his, his long range boxing, and with his new trainer. Um, but failing that works, you know. I know Doug will always revert back to what he knows, yeah. and you know, that'll be you know, getting up close and, and fighting, which he does very well. Um, and at that point, that's when you know the fight will, will really start. and you know the the big shots will be let off from both sides, and yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go we'll we'll go in there and we'll, we'll we'll see what happens at that point. Yeah, to be honest, mate, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's I think it's going to be a bit of a war because, as you say, that's all he knows, and um, you know that's kind of all he can bring to the table based on what he's done previously. Because obviously, he was one of these that likes to train himself, and you know he, I, I've never quite understood that, but. You know, a trainer's train and boxer's box. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a strange one, isn't it? But I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and um, I I think as the card as it is already, I know that fighters don't normally predict for themselves. But how do you predict the fight going? Like I said, it depends what Eubank wants to do. I feel like it will be. Um... Maybe Cage early on. Uh, I think he'll try and use his, his boxing skills, which is is maybe picked up of recent. And then, like I said, it will catch fire when when shots start to land. And you know, like I said, from both sides, um, that's when I think the fight will will catch fire, uh, and it will get exciting for the fans. It'll be a it'll be an exciting fight for the fans. Yeah, yeah, because it's. No disrespect to you, but you've had a lot of people write you off before this fight. Yeah, of course, so what massively. Do you, what do you say to those people that have written you off? Joe, you know I'm I'm not going to say nothing. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, come fight night, we'll see. And yeah, yeah. You know, whatever happens in there, the fans trust me. They, they're in they're in for a treat. Yeah, no. As I say, I'm really looking forward to it. And the four fights that are already on the card, it's making it look a, a great night already. And personally, you know, the headliner should have been Jonas and Taylor. You know, that's, to me, is an incredible 
incredible fight um, with everything on the line as well, especially your yeah, when, stable mate. How do you see that one going? When the fight was announced, you know, I think 80% of the comments, you know, all over social media, it was Instagram, Twitter, it uh, was the same response that, you know, their fight should have been um, top of the bill. And look, you know, they've, um, they've, got, they've got an argument for that. Um, it's a great fight, you know, Katie Taylor, you know, all the belts, Tasha Jonas, um, you know, they've, uh, they've got a past, you know, yeah. they fought before. And I think uh, women's boxing being so big now, it's, uh, you know, it's not a case of, you know, when you used to think of boxing, you used to think of two men. These women now can, they can really fight, like, you know, as good as, if not better. Um, so, you know, it's, it's well worthy of, of topping a bill, a huge bill like this. Uh, and again, I think that's an exciting fight. Um, obviously, Katie Taylor, great fighter. And, but Tash uh, in the gym, she she's on fire at the minute. And I'm really excited for that one. So if I gave you a pound, Marcus, because I'm not giving you any more than that, what, <laughs> who are you putting it on? Tasha, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. She, uh, you know, people are forgetting that Tasha's, you know, got a great pedigree as well uh, in the amateurs. Uh, but this is a different different ball game now. It's, you know, uh, you could say it's a completely different sport from the amateurs. Uh, listen, Kate Table is a, a great talent, unbelievable talent. And she's, she's paved the way for women's boxing. She's done huge things. And, you know, if maybe if it wasn't for Katie, then, you know, women's boxing wouldn't be where it is now. Um, and there's been a lot of boxers on her tail, you know, trying to catch up. And I think, you know, Tasha's, you know, well up there and, you know, deserved the, you know, gets a shot. And I'm, I'm confident that she'll, she'll take it with both hands. Yeah, yeah. And no, I, I just love how you speak so passionately about her. And, and it's not just because, you know, she's your stable mate. It's because... Her ability speaks for itself, doesn't it? You know, you look at her, her previous fights, and she's she's just quality, isn't she? Absolute quality. Yeah, technically, she she's unbelievable. Um, you know, problems for anybody self or um, you know, tricky. So, I just think if anyone's going to Kate Taylor, huge problems it is it is Tasha, and I think people think obviously after after a loss, she, a lot of people wrote her off. Um, but I'm not just confident because she's a stable mate. I see, I'm confident because, well, as well as that, I see her day in, day out, how good she is. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's on the pads or inspiring. You know, I see how much she's come on and how much fire's in her belly, you know, with this fight being announced. And I just think, come May the 1st, I don't think, you know, I don't think there'll be anyone to deny her. No, no. I think, I, I, I'm kind of stuck on the fence. I think I, I just I'm just looking forward to it. It's going to be one of those where it's going to split uh, the country down the middle of, as to who's going to go with who because it is one of those fights. They're both likable people. Um, they're both their boxing ability is incredible. So I think it's a difficult one. I'll chuck it. I'll chuck that prediction at you, but I, I won't answer it. <laughs> Listen, you. Uh, I, I, I believe you know Tashi will be the underdog going into this fight, you know, whether it's the bookies or with the general public fans. Uh, and, you know, listen, Tasha's Tash OK with that. She doesn't mind going there to the dog. Um, so, listen, with that pound that you've got, you, you go, you, you'll get a better <laughs> odds than Tash. So, you know, that's where I'd, I'd be putting it. Yeah, it might be a bit more of a, bit more than a pound on the night, I have to say, because I get a bit cold. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, moving on to the other one, just quickly, Chisora Parker. Hell of a, a hell of a clash. Dell's obviously, you never know what you're going to get out of Derek Chisora. Um, and Joseph Parker just come off the back of beating Junior Farr over in on home soil. So it should be an interesting one. They've both got an interesting resume, haven't they, of who they fought over the years. Who, who do you reckon? Difficult one. Listen, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one. And I think it depends on what uh, which Chisora turns up. You know, sometimes you can get a Chisora, um, you know, that just comes in as a goal. Or you get a Chisora that's you know really on it and uh, turns up to win. 
Uh, Parker, you know, technically, you know, you've got to go with Parker as being the better boxer and, and whatnot. But I just think, <laughs> listen, she's always, like, like his personality is, 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 um, is unpredictable. And I just think if the, if the, best, the best version of Chisora turns up, I think he, uh, I think he, I think he gets a stoppage. Um, obviously, massive punch. Up, saying that both obviously heavyweights, you know, any of them guys land, you know, it's uh, the heavy shots, and then if you can happen in heavyweight boxing, um, and I just feel that, you know, again with with social media when the fight was announced, um, people often say, you know, Chisora again. You know, topping bills, and I feel like Chizora could well could well think that this is his his, his last real good goal um, on the world level. Um, so I, I do believe he's going to come and have a, a real good goal, and you know, he gets through this fight, and you know he, he goes on to fight. He puts his name in the mix up, you know, the, with the the real big boys. Um, but listen, I think it's a great fight. There's some Parker. Will, will turn up and he, he'll be in shape, he'll be ready and he, he, I believe he will fight. Um, she's always fight if he has to and I just think, and this is a great fight, exciting fight. Um, you, must, I think you must be gutted. She's, up, she's over for me. You must What's be, that? You must be gutted in a way because I know like as a fighter you must think, don't get me wrong, I'm on a cracking card, you know, what an evening it's going to be, it's going to be Loads of people tuning in to watch all of you on the night. But isn't it one of those nights where you think, I could be sat at home and what a great one to watch? Or do you never think like that as a fighter? Listen, there's been, the, listen, there's been times when I've, um, I've been at fights and there's nothing better than be, being ringside for, for a massive fight like that. But listen, there's times when I often think I could be uh, tucked up on the couch. <laughs> um, watching watching a huge fight, but to be up close, especially with the with the heavyweights, uh, being up close and you know hearing the, the punches punches land, and then um, you know I don't I don't know what's happening with fans and stuff. It, it couldn't be behind closed doors, um, and not have that same atmosphere. But listen, it's a great fight, and I can't wait to be up close watching it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think fans or no fans, which I think at that point it will probably still be no fans. It's just going to be amazing, isn't it? It's just going to be one of those where you just want to see it. It doesn't matter like whether the fans are there or not. There's going to be so many people tuning in. And as you say, it's a different kind of atmosphere, isn't it? You're hearing the blows more. You're, you know, you're hearing what they're saying in the cor corners and stuff like that. I found it really more interesting in a way because you're actually, you know, having the microphone in the corner and, you know, Adam Smith going, oh, don't worry about the swearing. You know, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's one of those, just adds a different thing that no other sport can deliver really, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, like I said, being up close and, you know, hearing the punches. Like, sometimes another reason I do, I do often like being at home and watching the boxing is often times I watch a fight um, live there ringside and I've won. One way of seeing it, the way the way I see in the fight, and then I come home, and you you know you see it from a different angle, yeah. and you know commentary and all the rest of it, um, and you know you, you can you, your mind can be changed. So I, I do often like to watch fights, you know, both both there, and then come home and watch them out on TV, and you know I think often judges get obviously a lot of stick, and um, you know. But honestly, it's, it can be a completely different fight from when you're there to when you come home and watch it on the, on the television. Um, it's going to be a fight that I watch there and come home and definitely watch again. Yeah, definitely. Well, as I say, 1st of May 2021, it all happens. And, I, you know, I'll be, I'll be looking forward to your fight 100%. As I was saying, you know, before we came on, it's, it's going to be one of those. There's going to be a lot of people out there that want someone to turn up and shut you bank up and um yeah it's it's gonna be one of those i think you're gonna have so many fans on the night and um yeah it's just gonna be a cracker mate i i'm really looking forward to it already and it it seems so far away doesn't it but 
but time's just flown by this year, so yeah. It's, look, we, we've been we've been in lockdown for uh, over a year now. Yeah. So we, we've got what five weeks. Listen, it's nothing. It'll be here before we know it. And uh, I just got to make sure these next five weeks now really knuckle down and prepare the best the best I can. And you know that's exactly what I'm doing. And come May the first, you know I'll be as ready as I'll ever be. So how long are you in camp for, Marcus? How, how, when when do you finish your last training session before? Because I assume you'll be going into the bubble, won't you, as well? Yeah, the bubble will be, what, a few days, maybe five days, six days before, maybe. Uh, but I often use that last week just to, you know, wind down and start to relax. Nothing nothing too, uh, too hard. Uh, I've been, I've had, look, it's been, what, by the time the fight comes round, I'd have had about close to eight weeks notice of the fight. Um, I was in training weeks before that. Uh, so I feel like I've stayed ready yeah. and I've had a good camp. Eight weeks is plenty of time when you're already fit to start to prepare for an opponent. And I just think it's this is perfect time for me. It's great time. I'm 28 years of age, uh, coming into my prime. Um, the time just feel, feels right now. Yeah. No, you can see it, mate. You're, you're in great shape. You know, I... I see the photos and the videos being put out and, you, you know, you look ready and you've got a good team around you as well. And as you say, a good stable around you as well, which is good. You pick up that vibes from the other fighters as well. So, Marcus, I wish you all the best, mate. And uh, I appreciate it. I'll, as I say, I'll be watching it. We On, on this channel, we do a live watch along on the night. Um, so we obviously don't show the fight, but we do like a live commentary yeah. over the top. And uh, yeah, we'll be definitely doing your fight. It's one we've got written down and ready to go. So um, yeah, thanks for your time, mate. And I wish you all the best. I appreciate it. Night. Expect fireworks and, you know, don't blink. Yeah, no, definitely, mate. I'm looking forward to it. But thanks for coming on, mate. It. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. No problem. You take care, mate. Take care. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Marcus Morrison, what a top bloke. Uh, looking forward to seeing him fighting on um, 1st of May against Chris Eubank Jr. I know there's a lot of people out there that want to see him get do the business and get it done. And uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be, as he was saying, that's going to be an absolute firecracker of a fight and I can't wait. So um, wishing Marcus all the best for the fight. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the whole card. It's going to be a great card. So... Yeah, thanks for tuning in to JG's Fight Talk, sponsored by Riches Boxing and Limitless Creations. And um, I'll see you all soon. If you like what you've seen today, hit the subscribe button and uh, check out the rest of the content. Thank you.